Assalamu alaikum. Today's topic will be on the arches of the foot. There are three arches that we'll be covering, the medial arch, the lateral arch, and the transverse arch. Uh, if you were to look at the bottom of the foot, let's make this view proper. But, uh, here we go. Now, if you see over here, this is your right leg. You can see the femur, tibia, fibula, and the foot right here. Meaningly, this is the medial side. Hence, this right here is the medial arch being forming. The reason they call it an arch is because of its distinct bridge-like shape, starting from the lower end, rising up like a bridge, and coming down again. The bones that make up the medial arch are the calcaneus bone, which is your heel, we have the talus bone, which is the joining bone between the tibia and the calcaneum. And then we have the navicular bone right here. And then three cuneiform bones. These will then meet up with the tarsal bones, metatarsal bones. And then obviously up ahead we have the phalanges. Once again, the calcaneus, the talus, the navicular bone, the cuneiform bone right here. The cuboid bone is part of the lateral arch. So all these three make up the medial arch. And this gives your foot the distinct shape from the medial side. Now this arch, obviously, aside from the bony shape and structure, it has to have some sort of support. And those come from the muscles, the muscle tendons, as well as the ligaments. Before going to those specific muscles and tendons and ligaments, Let's look at the other side as well, the lateral arch, because a few of these uh, supporting structures overlap. So we'll see them all together at once. The lateral arch, as you can plainly see here, is similarly starting from the calcaneus. But here we have the cuboid bone. Talus is not involved in this case. And then we only have the last two metatarsals. The lateral arch is flatter as compared to the medial arch. And uh, these two arches together give a shape to the foot that is necessary for the gait cycle. How is that so? Because this distinct shape is actually more efficient for absorbing the weight from above and receiving the shock from below. And this also gives us the balance. And if you see um, uh, some other creatures, mammals in uh, the animal kingdom, uh, not all of them have arches actually because they are uh, adapted uh, into different styles of walking. But us humans, since our gait cycle is more complex, we need this arch. And finally then the transverse arch simply involves the cuneiform and the metatarsals right here. It's uh, more or less uh, a sm the smallest of the arches, but it is uh, transverse. The other two were longitudinal. Now let's see the structures which support these arches. I'm gonna zoom in on the medial arch right over here. See the distinct bridge-like shape. Let's see first and foremost the ligaments because these appear first. Let's, here we go. Now ignore the ligaments up over here. These are simply part of the joining uh, between the bones. You have basically your deltoid ligament which is the medial ligament. But the ones you need to focus on are the ones right here below. They're a bit transparent. You have the medial and lateral plantar ligament. Over here is the long plantar ligament. So it's not medial lateral, it's long and short. This plantar ligament supports both the medial and the lateral arches. You can see how it's pulling on the metatarsals with the calcaneum. This pull actually maintains that arch. The one behind it is the calcaneocuboid ligament. The other name known for this is the spring ligament. The full name was actually talo calcaneo cuboid ligament, but uh, here they've shortened it up. Assuming this is the same. Sorry, no, this is not that same ligament. That's on the medial side. Actually, it's the orientation that's getting in the way. Let's fix this first. Here we go. Now it's much better. The spring ligament I was referring to is actually the one on the medial side. Here we go calcaneo navicular one. This is your spring ligament, the strongest and most crucial ligament 
of the arches, particularly the medial arch. This is the thing that maintains the, it's like the core ligament that maintains the arch. The one we were seeing over here, this was the long plantar arch, and the short plantar arch appears right over here. I, can, I cannot see why it's not visible here. Well, let's just take it, it appears right behind this little side, this one's right behind here. This is actually the calcaneo cuboid ligament. This is less involved in maintaining the arches and more joining between the bones. This one, the spring ligament, and the long and short plantar ligament are the three main ligaments that you need to add whenever describing the ligamentous support of the arches. All these other ligaments are simply joining ligaments between the bones. They do give some, uh, contribute somewhat to the arches, but the three significant ones were the three I just mentioned. There is a fourth one as well, which is actually the most superficial, and that is actually the plantar aponeurosis, this one. This plantar aponeurosis, uh, while it gives support to the arches, it is more inclined to the lateral arch. Just like the spring ligament for the, the medial arch, the plantar aponeurosis is more for the lateral arch. Collectively, they will all support all arches, actually. But this is the most superficial arch as well, and it's also involved in maintaining the structure of the arch. Back to where we were. Following the ligaments, we then have the tendons. And the tendons right over here, actually you can only see the synovial sheaths of the tendon. They have not, uh, we are not they're not exposed the full tendons, let's expose them. But uh, before, uh, let's just uh, give you a little small opening here. These ligaments you see here from the medial side. Obviously, since they're coming from the medial side, they will be supporting the medial arch. We have the tibialis posterior, so now we'll see here, through which tibialis posterior passes through. We'll see the attachment in a moment. The flexor digitorum one, which goes to the digits, and then the flexor hallucis, which goes to the big toe. You can see how these two are crossing. It's a characteristic landmark here where the, these two cross. And uh, if I were to expose the tendons themselves, see here. Well, you see, the tendons are exposed, but so is the rest of the stuff, so it's like being obscured. Let me just hide this, so it's more clear. Here we go. You can see the flexor hallucis attached to the big toe. This tendon supports the medial arch. Flexor digitorum. This actually supports both arches, lateral and medial. And the tibialis posterior, which, which should be right over here, actually. This is the flexor retinaculum. Let's hide that. Here we go, the tibialis posterior tendon. You can see how it's massive structure. And this is actually the main contributor as far as the slings, uh, the muscles are concerned. In some books, these muscle tendons are referred to as slings. So uh, as far as there is slings and then there's also staples. Staples are basically the joining between the bones. These are actually different terms used in different books, but you just need to remember ligamentous support, muscular support. On the other end, on the lateral side, let's go over there, zoom out a bit. On this side, mostly we have the fibularis longus, tendon and fibularis brevis tendon, these two, also known as the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis. You can see how they are attached here and they give support to the lateral, but because the lateral is flat, they don't need to give that much of a pull actually, they're not, but they're still there to give some tension on the lateral side. The upper muscles you see up here, like extensor digitorum, they are not really contributing that significantly to the arches. They do give a pull. So long as the muscle tone is maintained, there is always a pull on these bones. And let's say in the case of uh, paralysis of these muscles, then the tension reduces and this does affect the arch. But that's only in the younger ages. There is a condition known as flat foot. Flat foot uh, is when the meal arch is non-existent. It is basically flat. It's actually normal in the first uh, few years of life for a baby. Babies have flat feet. By two to three years, then the medial arch is maintained due to the pull of the muscles. But supposedly it doesn't happen. In that case, corrective surgery needs to be done for these arches. In a different video, we'll then discuss the gait cycle, how the gait is actually performed. But this was basically just it for the arches. There was also a a small mention of the layers of the muscle layer of the sole of the feet, but again, that's for a different day.